All right, everyone, we're getting ready to start at 7.30. Looking good? I think we are good to go. All right, I'm told that we are online now, so we're going to get started. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Elder Carl. Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the launch of our Health Ministries Weekend here at the Windermere SDA Church. As we embark upon this first Sabbath of September, we thank each and every one of you who have braved this rainy weather to come out to be with us tonight. Together, we will learn how to live healthy, happy, and prosperous lives. Amen? Amen? I hope that you know that we're in this mission together. As pastor says, we need to learn how to live abundant lives right here while we are on earth. And we're going to be definitely taking uh, steps to do that. <clears throat> we do not take your being here lightly because we know it's a sacrifice to be out in this weather. Thank you for all who are also joining us online on our Facebook and YouTube channels. We are grateful that you're joining us so you can learn with us as well. Please share the link so that someone who needs to learn how to have a healthy relationship might be able to benefit from this. Amen? Amen. Okay, so before we go any further, I hope you feel welcomed. And we're going to have a good time together the entire weekend. We are going to just invoke the Holy Spirit's presence with us here to help us tonight. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you so much for your love, for your mercies, and for your blessings, for having taken us through one more week and spared us from the wrath of that hurricane. Lord Jesus, as we pray for those who have been affected, Lord, we ask, Lord, that they will see you as light shines on them through this terrible time. Tonight, Lord, as we gather here to learn more about living abundant and happy and healthy lives, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to soften our hearts and allow us to take in the information that you are sending to us through your servant, Dr. Cross. Please, God, help us to do our best to live healthy lives and to teach others by our example that it can be done and that life can be beautiful. We praise your holy name and thank you for another Sabbath. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So tonight... We are, so, we are so blessed because we have tonight presenting this message on healthy relationships. And anybody want to have a healthy relationship? My daughter has said to me, if people can figure out how to have healthy relationships, what a beautiful world this would be. Because that, I think, is one of the hardest things. And so tonight, we're blessed to have our very own uh, Dr. Pastor Dr. Cross who is going to be presenting uh, the message tonight. And just a little bit about Dr. Cross before we have our meditation song. Uh, Dr. Dolphy Cross was born in St. Anne, Jamaica, and is an ordained minister of the gospel. He received his professional training at West Indies College, which is now called Northern Caribbean University. He also studied at Andrews University, Trinity Theological Seminary, University of Miami, 
and Argosy University. Dr. Cross is a family therapist, a psychotherapist, a conflict resolution therapist, a specialist, and a clinical pastoral educator. He also specializes in pastoral counseling and has helped many pastors to keep their marriages together. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's not just us regular people who struggle. Pastors struggle too. So Dr. Cross worked in Jamaica, in St. Lucia, Barbados, and impacted Trinidad and the entire Eastern Caribbean islands with his lectures and seminars on family values. He also serves as education consultant for Trinity Theological Seminary. Now, Dr. Cross started the New Hope SDA Church in Fort Lauderdale in 1995. And in May 1996, he became the first clergy person to receive the keys to the city of Lauder Hill in Florida for community development. Go, Dr. Cross. Amen. Amen. That's a pretty big, big achievement. He's also the author of the document on the paradigm shift in evangelism and church growth. Dr. Cross successfully used the principles in this document in collaboration with the power of the Holy Spirit to grow the pastoral district he served in Fort Lauderdale, listen, from two congregations in 2016 to nine congregations in 2018. Let me tell you, Amen. that is a powerful accomplishment with the help of the Holy Spirit. He is the author of Relationship Restored, which includes the basement technique for couples conflict resolution. Powerful stuff. Dr. Cross presently serves a Florida conference of SDA as senior pastor for us here at Windermere and for our sister church, Emmanuel. Dr. Cross and his beautiful wife, Dr. Beverly Sterling Cross, are both certified facilitators for Prepare and Rich, and they conduct family enrichment workshops and seminars nationally and internationally. I know recently you were in the beautiful island of Grenada. Beautiful. He believes that humility is power. Amen? Humility is power. Therefore, we all can become powerful people if we remain humble. His favorite text is Philippians 4.13, which is also one of mine. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So my friends, after the singing of this special selection... The next voice that you will hear will be that of our very own Pastor Dr. Dolphy Cross. Amen. Happy Sabbath. It's for my glasses. Love 
was when Jesus walked in history Lovingly he brought a new life that's free was God nailed to bleed and die to reach and love one such as I love was when my sin and so trapped was I my whole world caved in love was when Jesus rose to walk with me A new life that's free. Love was God, only He would try to reach and love one such. As I to love one such as I. Thank you, Alfie. That was beautiful. Love was when. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. And um, Sister Weir, boy, you, you, I was comfortable all along until that introduction, man. And we thank you so much for your kind words of introduction. God is good. Thank you for those who are joining us on YouTube in the virtual space. This evening, I especially want to take time out to thank Dr. Arlene Gale and her committee in the health department for planning this well-needed health weekend. Amen. And so, I want to use this opportunity, the only one I'm going to get this weekend, to welcome the cadre of professionals lined up to make presentations over this weekend. If you made plans to be anywhere, change those plans. Because this weekend, you need to be here. Amen? Amen. This is definitely a health summit. Amen? Amen? And so those who are with us tonight, visitors, I want to welcome you also. It's good to have you. And welcome those of our friends on the internet there. You know, I'm quite fortunate this evening, really, that I am the first presenter because I am not a health professional. <laughs> I am just a healthy professional. 
God is good. What do you say? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I can't do anything without my wife. And, um, you know, uh, Bev, um, you want to come and just do a little icebreaker thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> hey, just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. All right. This is my wife, my beautiful wife, Beverly. All right. Okay. Let me get some water. He called me up here, and he leave me. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, we're talking about healthy family life. But how can we have a healthy, happy life? Not by our circumstances, but by letting God change our delight. Mm -hmm. Scripture says, delight in the Lord's instruction. Psalms 1-2. We need God to change our delight so that we value God's word more than words of those around us. When our desire for God and his word increases, it creates an eternal impact that brings happiness to our lives. God's truth stabilized us, sustain us, and shows the spirit is within us as we bear fruits. This fruitfulness is from God that makes the entire course of a believer's life. And nothing, nothing can take that happiness away from us. Nothing. Just remember, our happiness is not extend of self, ourself. Our happiness is within us. And when we are happy, we will have a healthy, happy life, family life, and also in church. Thank you. Amen. All right. All right. Let's get going, man. Let's do some scratching where it's itching, huh? Have you ever had an itch mm, around your back <laughs> and you want to scratch the spot but your hand can't reach? What do you do? You're calling somebody to come and scratch for you. But guess what? They're trying to scratch but they're not hitting the spot. What do you say? Up oh, more. <laughs> A little more to the left. A little more to the right. Up oh, more. And when they hit the spot, what do you say? Ah. Scratching is therapeutic, huh? All right. It's good to see my friend Donovan coming from far. How was the flight? It was good. Great. Good to have you in our audience tonight. And he's our special guest speaker for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Beverly, for that little bit of icebreaker. She talked about change. Change. If you want to be happy and healthy, you must be willing to change. Change the way you think. Change the way you live. Change your attitude. Change your behavior. And some may need to change some friends. Heavenly Father, in a special way now, just continue to make your presence felt in this place. Be with those who have joined us on YouTube. And may something be said this evening that will truly make a difference for somebody. 
Speak through me, therefore, to the hearts of your listening people. And as I speak forth, your words of truth and life may self be crucified. And may Jesus Christ and him only be lifted up and seen. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. So I'm talking about happy and healthy family relationship. I wish I could just read through Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 30. 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? God is speaking to us. Verse number 26. Behold, he says, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap or gather in barns. Yet, your heavenly father feeds them. Here's the question. Are you not better than they? Verse number 28. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And verse number 29 says, I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And verse number 30. According to verse number 30. Hmm. If God can take care of ants and birds and lilies, why not you? Why not me? I am sure that over this weekend you're going to hear a lot about worry and stress. Maybe depression. Beloved, tonight, however, I want to share with you some simple rules to be happy and satisfied. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go through them quickly because I have 12 of them. Rule number one. Be socially supportive. Take time to help. Take time to give some form of comfort. When you reach out to those who really need help, it gives you a sense of pride, a sense of purpose. And you will feel better. These things add to your happiness in life. Sometimes you may have to go out of your way to do things. One of my brothers had a surgery A few days ago, and my itinerary was here, and I dropped everything, and I went to be with him, and I felt good. I felt good. I want to thank my wife for playing the part of the Holy Spirit because I was a little stubborn and I had some other important stuff to do. And I said, I'm not a surgeon. But then I remember my role and function as pastor. That's what I do for my members. I say, okay, honey, let's get ready and go. When I got there, they just wheeled him out of the room for prepping. 
Big hospital couldn't find him. We finally found him. We use our chaplain's skill dog to get in. I was able to pray with my brother. I felt good. And I'm saying, what if I had not done that? My day would have been messed up. Happiness, you can find happiness in going out of your way to do some good. Amen? Number two, stop blaming yourself. We are too hard on ourselves. It makes more sense to deal with outcomes than with faults. Things will always go wrong because this is a messed up world. Sometimes things will go contrary to your plans. Don't catalog your failures. Learn the lessons from them and move on. Number three, be a peacemaker. Somebody say amen. Be a peacemaker. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9 says, Blessed are the what? Peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So try to be the voice of reason in your family, among your peers. Try to be that voice of reason. Number four, love and cherish animals. I have a board member, and she will miss any board meeting to take care of her animals. And it's the first time I'm saying this. Stacy, I admire that. I admire that, Sister Ford. Take time to love animals. And I will tell you, well, I'm exposing myself tonight, but I know the people in my church who love animals. I'm saying... You've got to love animals. I didn't say love all types. But you have to have an animal that you don't mind being around. I grew up with birds. And rabbits. And dogs. Animals. I'm talking about what gives happiness? Or add to your happiness. Number five, make your work a calling and not a job. When it's your calling, your work, you will work with a sense of purpose and a sense of pride and a sense of dignity and at the end of every day you will feel satisfied. Number six. Don't ever trade your morals for your goals. I'm talking about rules to become happy. People who compromise what they believe in to reach their goals end up being dissatisfied with their accomplishments. And they are never satisfied. Don't, number seven is, don't pretend 
to ignore things your loved ones do that bother you. Don't pretend to ignore things that your loved ones do that bother you. Talk about them. Because if you stop talking, if you hide away, if you're afraid, it can evolve into resentment, discontentment, and ultimately argument. You don't want that. So constructively raise the issue of your disagreement lovingly. Number eight. Every day make an effort to impact to impact somebody else's life. And you don't have to leave your home to do that. A telephone call can make a difference. Just do it. Just do it. Do you know how it makes me feel when I pick up the phone and call somebody? And at the end I said, thank you for calling. I appreciate that call. Just like that. It makes me feel a sense of pride and worth. People matter. As a people of God, we must have a love for God, a zeal for God's glory, and the love for fallen humanity. If everything revolves around you, you cannot be a happy person. There are a lot of people who tell themselves they are happy because they really want to believe that. But you know, you don't have to tell anybody that you're happy because happiness is supposed to exude. They can see that. They can feel that. In your presence, there must be fullness of joy. Number nine, be flexible. Be flexible. Don't expect everything to be done your way, within your time, and on your terms. Be flexible. If everyone approaches relationship this way, no one would be happy. So always think of the other person better than yourself. God first, others second, and self last. When you tell some people that, they say, no, not me. Self has to be in it. Number 10. Join a group. Join a group. For the professional visit, even for peer review. Join a group. Here at church, we have the what, elder? What do we have in the groups? We have the parishes become a part of a parish. Join a group. Try to get involved with your parish. Young people, young people, get involved with what we are coming to TikTok ministry. Join a group. No man is an island. No man stands alone. Everybody needs somebody sometimes. Join a group. The 
world really don't change people. It's people who change the world. Number 11. How we see the world is more important than what the world is. And number 12. Help the next person you see who needs some help. Help the next person whom you see need some help. Being able to help is a gift. Help is a gift. The gift of helping should be a ministry also in the church. The gift of helping. Giving helps. And when you give in a helpful way, it's really a win-win situation. If you only have to believe, because the more you give, the more you receive. The more you give, the more you receive. And I heard something a few last week that it did something to me. And I can't stop talking about it. I was in the presence of some people and we were talking about giving. And I learned something. I learned that if somebody gives you something and you have a lot of that something, don't tell the person, no, you don't want it. Because if you don't take the gift that the person is giving you genuinely, you are cheating that person out of his or her blessing. Ooh. That hit me like a I said, I never really thought of it that way. Because it is more blessed to than to receive. And so the person comes to you genuinely to give you something and you brush it aside or say, I don't need that. And then you cheat the person out of their blessing. So tonight, we need to change the way we think. Because the way you think will determine the things you speak. And the things you speak will largely determine who you are. So speak ye and so do. Because you will be judged. Amen? Accordingly. So tonight, I want to encourage you, my listeners... To develop the art of thinking big. Don't allow anyone or anything to cause your thinking to shrink. Think big. The world is filled with different sizes of people. Don't allow little people to keep you down. Think big. And as you go through life as a Christian, remember the life, the world you're in is not perfect. As a matter of fact, it is a sinful world. As a Christian, you must position yourself to be like stainless steel. Because you have to mingle with sinners every day. You can't be like 
Those priests, and you know that celibacy never did work and it's still not working. You have to mingle. But like stainless steel comes in contact with stain and remains stainless. As Christians, we can come in contact with sin and remain sinless. So think big and expect to be gossiped and to be sniped at. I'm talking about being happy. You know how many people call me sometimes because somebody said this about me church or somebody and they're sad even don't even want to come back to church. Because somebody said something. You've got to learn how to insulate yourself. So expect to be gossiped about. Expect to be sniped at. All you need to do is to put things in proper perspective. Because when you are being gossiped or sniped at, it is proof that you are growing. Smart people, in quotation marks, don't gossip vagrants. You know, people go around and beg and find their food in the garbage. I don't have anywhere to sleep. Smart people don't waste their time gossip those people. They only gossip people who have arrived. Because once they start gossiping you, you know, your name will attract attention. And a gossiper is psychologically sick. Is an attention seeker. You've got to position yourself to be happy and stay happy. Try as you may. There's none of you here that can make me vex. (laughs) You can't. You can't. I told you my nickname when I was growing up. We'd have to have an interpreter if I tell you. Minovex. That was my nickname. Minovex. Oh, well... You'll work that out, my friends over there. You'll get it. Tomorrow you'll get it somehow. Mm. I'm talking about becoming happy and staying happy. Don't argue over petty issue. Mm. If your relationship is in trouble, look within yourself to see if you are at fault. And if you are, quickly make it right. If you are not at fault, humble yourself and give the person at fault the opportunity to apologize. You see, guilt can cause shame and shyness. And so, a person who is guilty may want to stay away. So, you have to do whatever it takes to redeem the fallen brother or sister. And that will help to make you happy. A sense of accomplishment. Remember, your happiness is not dependent on anyone else. Those of you who are married here, your husband can't make you happy. Your wife can't make you. You see, happiness is internal. Happiness is within you. Amen? All right. So if you really want to be happy, embrace, believe, and accept this. Because higher than the highest human thoughts can reach is God's ideal for his children. Godliness and godlikeness 
that's mean righteousness, are the goals to be reached. That's a quote from the book Education, page 18. I hear my friend repeating that. So the best friend to have is who? Jesus. He will not leave you alone. And he will not let you down. I want to be happy. What about you? I want to be happy. And I'm saying for any of us to experience the real happiness. We've got to change the way we think. Because if you think you are inadequate. You are. If you think you are second class, you are. I remember, I, you know, I was in one of the islands and I was traveling on this plane. They called him Liat. <laughs> I'm in line. And they were calling to Upgrade. I went straight up. <laughs> Not you, sir. I'm calling you. <laughs> <laughs> Who else could you be calling but me? I'm not looking around. I'm calling. <laughs> yeah, not you, sir. It's the gentleman behind you. But that's how I thought about myself. That's right. That's right. If you think you are poor, you are. We call that the grasshopper mentality. Back over there in Numbers chapter 13, when Moses sent the, the, the spies on this espionage mission, they came back. You thought the giants saw them? The giants didn't see them. If the giant had seen them, they would never report to give. But they went back and a part of the report, we felt like grasshoppers. So what do you do with grasshoppers? So the way you conduct yourself can decide and determine how people treat you. I'm going to wrap this up. So Proverbs 23, 7. I'm saying, you've got to change the way you think. Do you know that the heart literally thinks? Not just the brain. The heart. There are some thinking agency in the heart. Neurons. And when they study the Bible, they say, hey, hey, it's right there in scripture. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So develop the ability to think well of yourself. Don't make yourself cheap. How you look on the outside greatly tells how you feel on the inside. Learn to appreciate and love yourself. Self-love is not a sin. Because if you don't love yourself, don't come close to me. If you don't love yourself, you can't love me. You've got to love and appreciate who you are. It's just real. When you feel set back and defeated, and believe me, my brothers and sisters, you will have that feeling every now and again. When they do come, think big. Think big. It is not possible to achieve large success without some degree of setbacks and hardships. So you can't give up just like that. You've got to be determined. 
And finally, there are only two families in the world. Only two families in this world. The family of God and the family of Satan. Hmm. And you and I belong to one of these families. I know which one I belong to. I belong to the family of God. And I'm praying that you belong to the family of God because there are only two families. And there's no middle ground. So in God's family, there's no cousin. We are brothers and sisters. No cousins. No middle ground. You are either right or wrong. It's either truth or error. It's either God or Satan. Whose side are you on? So it's like two roads before you pick your choice. Two families and only two relationships. The vertical relationship between the man and his God and the horizontal relationship between the man and his fellow men. And the way you treat the horizontal determines the connectedness with the vertical. So tonight as I close. Tonight I want you to think like Jacob. The last thought I want to leave you with. I want you to think like Jacob. The relationship between Jacob and Esau, his brother, was broken. Jacob was not a happy man. And I want to believe, although we don't have enough story on him, that Esau wasn't happy either. But when you study the life of Jacob, there came a time when there was going to be the next day when he should meet his brother Esau. Jacob made a decision. It's a decision that you must make tonight. Jacob made a decision that before I meet my brother Esau tomorrow, I must get it right with God tonight. I can't face this man on my own. So what did he do? He wrestled. He wrestled. The Bible talks about two wrestling. And it seems like we have taken a decision because a lot of us like this type of wrestle. The Bible said we wrestle not with what? But with what? I said, let us pattern Jacob tonight. And if we have to wrestle, let's wrestle with God. Let's wrestle with him. Tell him what you want. If you want to improve relationship, tell him what you want. This weekend is going to be a fantastic weekend. And I'm praying that everybody who is anybody will turn up. 
I looked at the cadre of presenters. And I don't want to miss it. I have a son all the way down. I, I said, I wish you were in Orlando this weekend. We have success at our fingertips. We have success as a people right at our fingertip. But we don't know how to grasp it. Your hand cannot hold anything if you keep it open. There comes a time when you got to close it. Grasp it. So tonight... As you seek to change your thinking, as you plan to wrestle with Jesus, change your thinking, wrestle with Jesus, but somewhere in the middle, be willing to surrender. Be willing to surrender. Because when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well it is well with my soul may God bless you real good tonight let us pray Great God, no compassionate Father. We thank you for the opening night of this fantastic weekend. A weekend, Lord, where I believe your Holy Spirit will use these presentations in a reflective way where we can look introspectively and we'll see ourselves. And we will make changes. There's some of us who need to make changes in our health habits. In every other phase and facets of our lives, we need to make changes. May we pledge tonight by the grace of God to be willing to submit to the Holy Spirit who has the capacity and the power to initiate and bring about that change. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for the attendance. Thank you for those of our friends and family members who have joined us on the internet and YouTube. And thank you for giving us good weather. And we claim it throughout the rest of the weekend. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I hope you were blessed like I was. Thank you so much, Pastor. And thank you for always reminding us that we need to grasp our happiness. Amen? Hold on to it. And yes, I want to definitely experience the happiness that God has sent my way and that I will be able to pass that on to somebody else. Amen? Amen. So I um, just wanted to point out for tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to be going, continuing the health message, healthy eating habits, uh, we're going to talk about healthy lifestyles that's in the morning. Then in the afternoon, we're going to be looking at mental and emotional health. We will be looking at depression and anxiety, meditation and mindfulness, coping skills, how we can make it through these difficult seasons of our life, physical health. And then on Sunday afternoon, we're going to be looking at financial health. And how we can make better choices with our finances. Amen. So we're going to be covering the different aspects 
uh, that are important for us to be able to thrive and have this abundant life that we all want to get. Am I the only one who want that for me? No, all of us, we want happier, healthier lives. God bless you um, all the time. 10.30. Okay. So Sabbath school tomorrow will be an abbreviated version. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at husbands and wives and how what God expects of us and how to treat each other, that relationship. So the theme is just really ripe for us this weekend. And we ask that you come on out, support us, and tell somebody else who needs to know this. All right. So thank you, everyone. We're going to close off in prayer and just ask for God's mercies to take us home safely. Let us pray. Father God, again, we just are so grateful, Lord, for what you are doing in our lives right here at Windermere SDA Church. Thank you, Lord, for sending Pastor Cross our way and for him, Lord, to show us that we can have abundant lives, happy lives, and that we should grasp it, Lord. Thank you for the health ministry team uh, led by Drs. Gail and Dr. Agburia for putting this together. And we pray, Lord, that at the end of the day, we will be healthier in every aspect of our lives. Be with us, Lord, as we travel home and help us, Lord, to come back tomorrow refreshed and ready to gain what you have prepared for us. Bless us, keep us, forgive us, and save us, Lord, at all costs. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone.